All right, what's going on everyone? Welcome to a new YouTube video. Today we're gonna to be talking about gear, specifically packing. I think a lot of photographers and creatives can all agree with me when you say that packing and traveling in general is just like a lot of work. And I think specifically traveling internationally is can put a lot of stress on your trip. And I firmly believe that packing the right way can help with that. So we're gonna be looking in my camera bag today when I'm packing for an upcoming trip to Tokyo. Going to Tokyo in two days, we're gonna be going for a week and a half. And this is all the photography gear that I'm bringing. I'm not gonna talk about clothes because you didn't come to this channel to learn what I wear every day. You wanna learn about all this photography gear that I'm bringing. So let's talk about all that. I'm gonna talk about how I bring each item with intention and why I bring each item specifically and tips and tricks on how to like lessen your load a little bit so your back isn't killing you and you're not fumbling around for that lens that you don't even really need for that shot. So let's get into it. All right, so starting things off, we have the camera bag itself. This is the Peak Design Travel Backpack. Uh, they just released this line, I believe, three or four months ago, something like that. Um, and I really wanted to get this bag. I was waiting until they were actually in stock and I picked one up about a month ago. And since then, I've taken on tons of trips with me, uh, both abroad and in the US. And this thing has never failed me, it's amazing. I don't have enough experience with it to have a detailed review of it yet, but so far, amazing bag. And this is what's inside. So as you open the bag here, you see that I actually don't have a lot of stuff with me. Um, we have some simple inserts in here just for cameras and stuff and I have one pouch for all of my technology gear but that's really all that I need you know I, I think a lot of people you see all these review videos or videos where people show you what's in their camera bag and I think sometimes like there's a lot of things that people don't actually really need that they're bringing with them and for me on each trip I take into account you know what I'm actually bringing with me and why I'm bringing it and if there's even a slight of a doubt that I'm not going to use it I probably won't bring it because chances are I don't need that lens when I can just get that shot with the lens that I'm already bringing with me you know so for this trip specifically, I'm going to be bringing only the 1DX. I also own the Canon EOS R, which I've been messing around with for a bit, but I'm not going to be bringing that because I'm not going to be vlogging. So I'm just going to shoot all my photos, all my stills, as well as video for the cinematic travel video that I'm going to make from this trip on the 1DX. So just to show you guys, we are filming on the 1DX right now with the 24 to 70 lens. Uh, I'm going to be bringing the 1DX, like I said, but the 24 to 70 is actually going to stay here because of the other lenses that I'm bringing with me. And then also up here recording, we have the EOS R with the 16 to 35 F4 IS. I'm going to be bringing that lens specifically because I love it for video. I think it's an amazing lens and the image stabilization is just top notch. And for video, you really need that IS if you don't want shaky footage. So that's why it's not in the bag right now, but we are bringing the 1DX as well as the 16 to 35, which will be kind of the go-to combo for video on this trip. Next year, we have the Canon 85 millimeter 1.4 image stabilized lens. Like we're, As you can see, we're going with the theme here of image stabilized lenses. The 85 millimeter lens though is just incredible. I picked this up about four days ago, but I've shot with 85 millimeter lenses in the past and I love the compression of this focal length. Specifically as well, it's so much smaller than the 70 to 200. You're not lugging around a massive lens. So that's like another intentional choice that I made when I bought it. I could have bought the 70 to 200. I just felt like the 85 millimeter would cover all of my bases. And as well as has it has such a l smaller footprint than the 70 to 200. Um, so it's really nice and small, compact. It does have a nice weight to it. A little bit too heavy in my opinion, but that's what you get with Canon's glass. You know, the glass is incredible, but it does come at a price, which is the weight. Uh, but this lens is staying with me the entire trip. I'm gonna be getting some footage of the cherry blossoms as well as shooting some portraits. I think it's gonna look really nice. So this lens is coming with me. Next, I have the infamous Canon 35 millimeter F1.4 series two lens. Uh, this lens is incredible. As you guys know, I've done a video on this lens. Uh, I think the best part about it is that it's just so versatile. You can shoot photos with it. You can shoot video with it. I mean, it, you can stop down to 1.4 and the sharpness as well as the focusing is just so sharp and fast that you never have to worry about if your photos are in focus, even if you're at 1.4, which a lot of lenses you would need to double check. I just completely trust this lens and that's why I did that entire video on it because this lens really is truly my favorite lens. And I love just how crisp and sharp, it's lightweight, it's low profile and it fits right on my 1DX. This is what we will be getting the majority of the stills with. I think for video, mostly I'm gonna stick with the image stabilized lenses, but the 35 mil lens will be a great choice as well. Moving on to film stuff. So I am bringing the Leica M6, which if you guys haven't seen, we actually just did a video with this as well. Um, this camera got here about two weeks ago, been putting it through its paces. I don't, ha again, I don't like the camera bag. I don't have enough experience with it to have a detailed review of it yet. I just mainly did a first impressions video, but this camera is incredible, especially with this Voigtlander 35 mil 1.4 lens. I just love the tactile feel of it. I love the weight. I love like the size, it's nice and small and it can just be easily swung around your neck and you're good to go. 
So I'm really excited to be shooting with this camera. I, for the 35 millimeter sensor size, this camera is a beast and I'm so excited to test it out in Japan. Moving on to medium format. I don't normally bring medium format and 35 mil. I usually pick one or the other, but in this case, we're gonna be shooting a lot of landscape photos, especially of the cherry blossoms. And I felt like the Bamiya 7.2 would definitely be utilized there. Um, again, I could have brought my other film cameras as well. I could have just packed every camera I have into one bag. I don't even know if all the cameras I have would fit into one bag, but I'm being intentional again. You know, I am bringing two film cameras, but I do believe that they both have their own purposes and their own value. That's why I'm bringing them. So the Mamiya 7.2, I believe, will be amazing for landscape shots as well as kind of just everyday travel photos walking around. And the Leica will be a bit more smaller for when I just want to bring a camera with me and leave the rest of my bag at home. Um, so this is going to be mostly shot for landscapes. We're going to be going to Mount Fuji. We're going to be going to Kyoto, all of the mountain villages. And this is going to be a great camera for that. We're going to be, I'm going to be able to set it on a tripod, shoot some really nice landscape stills. And I'm excited to shoot with this thing. We also have the 65mm f4 lens on here, which is about the equivalent of a 39mm focal length on a 35mm camera. So it's perfect for landscape photos. It's okay for portraits. I prefer the Leica, honestly, over this for portraits, just because you can get closer with that and it does stop down to 1.4. But for the most part, for landscapes and such, this is going to be an amazing camera for Japan. Next here we have the Peak Design Tech Pouch. Uh, this is the only technology pouch pretty much that I'm bringing with me. And inside is pretty much everything that I need in order to charge all my devices. I am bringing a gimbal, the DJI Ronin S, which you've seen in the past I bring with me on most of my trips, just to get some nice stable footage, especially when I'm not shooting with an IS lens. The Ronin is really nice for that. And to get those really nice kind of movements throughout, you know, while, as we're walking around and such. I'll definitely bring the Ronin out for some shots. So I have charging cables in here for the DJI Ronin S. I also have this brick made by Belkin, which is amazing. I believe it's called the Surge Plus Power Protector. And the cool thing about this is you have three full-size charging ports as well as two USB 3.0 ports. So you can plug in all your devices and charge everything. And all I need is one travel adapter put on this and I'm good to go. So that's really nice. This is all I need to, tra to charge everything instead of bringing a battery block for every single device that I own. That's just like a waste of space in my bag. So this is all I need. And then I have about four or five cables in here just to charge everything, as well as my passport in the middle. Um, can't really go anywhere without this. So passport's coming with. Uh, also on this side though, I have the SanDisk, I believe it's called the Extreme Portable SSDs. So these things are amazing because they're literally half the size of a credit card and they hold up to two terabytes. This is the two terabyte version. They're a little spendy. I believe this was about $400, but I do believe that this is worth it over the Lacey hard drives, which are widely known as some of the best hard drives on the video and photo market for that matter. But this specifically is just incredible because it allows you to have such a small form factor with also the speed and reliability as well as the size that a lot of the other hard drives out there don't have. So this is an amazing little device and it just fits right in your bag. It takes up no space. This is perfect for traveling. And then when I get home, all I do is plug it into my iMac and back everything up. Also in here, I have the Lexar CFast 2.0 card reader. So we are shooting on the 1DX for this trip for, uh, for our digital stuff. So I'm going to be needing a card reader for that. Obviously we gotta bring that as well, as well as a Apple Magic Mouse. Um, I don't know, some people travel with mouses, some people don't. I prefer to have a mouse, especially if I'm going to start getting a timeline developed while I'm in Japan. I wanna be able to have you know the efficiency of a mouse with me. I don't really like using the trackpad on the MacBook Pro. Um, the Magic Mouse is great and it's really reliable and it connects easily the battery life lasts months. So that's coming with me as well. Moving on here as well, just in this little side pocket right here, I have one of these, I believe they're called Spuds. Um, so this is basically like a super simple cleaning cloth for your devices. It tucks away just in like this really nice little pouch right here. All you do is just shove it right back in and you can clean all of your lenses, your phone, your MacBook, like whatever you have, it just sits right here on the side. Moving on as well, I have the MacBook Pro. This is my MacBook Pro 15 inch, I believe this is from like 2012 or 2013. I don't really do a lot of editing on this. This is mostly just for transferring files to and from the hard drives from the 1DX. Not, I mean, I'll edit some, a few photos on here as well, but I really honestly enjoy editing the photos when I get back home. Um, but if I wanna, you know, edit a few quick photos to post on Instagram, I will do that with this. Otherwise though, this really doesn't get used that much. I wish there was more, a more efficient way to transfer footage. But as I know of, there's not really anything besides just a traditional laptop computer. So this has come with me as well.
<laughs> so the cool thing about this bag is that you have the option to extend another 10 liters on top of the bag, on the front of the bag, which is awesome. So you have room for all of this available space now in the, in the front of the bag, which I think is a great feature. You know, if you want to bring like something home that you bought while you're traveling or whatever, you have extra space to put stuff in your bag, which is really helpful. So in this front compartment here, I have just a couple things. As you can see, there's a bunch of zippered compartments. I have a case, a Tiffin case for all the ND filters that I'm going to be using for this trip. Um, we have one for the 24 to 70 and one for the 16 to 35 and the 85. So every ND filter that I'm going to be using for video is in here. Also in here, I have this Pelican case for all the CF cards. Um, I've literally had this for probably like five years. I, I don't even remember the last time I bought this thing. It was so long ago. They're just really reliable. You can throw it on the ground, you can drop it in water, you can you know kick it, you know what, whatever it may have you, and it's gonna be fine, which is really nice. So it's nice to know that like all of your really prized video clips, footage, and photos are safe in here. Moving on down here as well, I have the film bag. So this is pretty exciting. Um, it's literally just a bag. It's made by Think Tank, which is like the best part about it. There's nothing gimmicky. It's just a bag filled with film. Um, so I'm not bringing as much film as I normally would on this on a trip like this because I want to buy some specialty films while I'm in Tokyo. Tokyo is widely known for some really cool camera stores, and I want to be able to explore those and like shoot some film that I buy there as well. But I am bringing some film with me. I am bringing Portra 160, Portra 400, and Portra 800. Uh, those are kind of the go-to films for me, but I do want to shoot some specialty black and white films, maybe some ektachrome, stuff like that, and I'll buy that one while I'm in Japan. The thing is though that I don't need to bring all that with me now because that's just gonna take up more space in my bag. I can buy film while I'm over there and shoot that film and bring it back with me. I don't need to bring you know hundreds of rolls of film with me. I can just bring a few rolls to get me started and I'll buy the rest while I'm over there. So normally I would keep a couple books in here with me as well. Uh, I like to read, I like to you know read self-help books, I like to read travel books, you know, nonfiction, that kind of stuff is usually my go-to. But as a recent, I've actually been using Audible and let's make some coffee and talk about why Audible is dope. If you're into audiobooks, you already know that Audible is the best place to get an audiobook straight to your device. Up until a few months ago, I never tried an audiobook, but as of late, I've been gravitating towards them more than traditional books. Sometimes music can get really repetitive on long travel days, so it's nice to have the flexibility of an audiobook to keep me entertained. I enjoyed the driving option as well, as I go on a ton of road trips and an audiobook is a perfect companion for those long trips. I find that I read longer and do a better job of listening when I am being read to, and Audible is no different. Right now I'm really into self-help books, and Atomic Habits by James Clear is an incredible book about building successful habits that stick. If you're into that or audiobooks in general, go to audible.com slash Samuel Elkins to get a free book of your choice, or text Samuel Elkins to 500-500 to get started. Now, back to the video. Okay, so now that we are back, we're going to talk about just a few more things that I like about this bag. Uh, one of them being this little top compartment right here. This is normally where I'd put like a passport or stuff like that. You know, I'd slide my passport in here, maybe my AirPods. Just small things that I think are really valuable that I want to get to very easily. That goes in this pocket right here, which zips up nice and easily. As well as on the front part, like where your back is normally, uh, the really cool thing is that you can bring these side straps out from the side and be able to cinch them on your waist. So that provides like a nice support, especially when you're like hiking or walking through a city and you don't want all that strain on your back. I really like how this bag does that as well. And finally, what you can do is you can take these straps and put them inside here. So we got those and then this is gonna go in here as well. And then now you just have a full-fledged like basically duffel bag. So you can grab it from the top right here and being able to walk with it. You can set it on top of your luggage. You can you know do whatever makes the most sense for you. But I like how you can take out all these straps and connect them as well to carry the bag. But at the same time, you can put them all away and then just make it really minimal and be able to carry it just with one handle. So as you can see, this bag has tons of features and I'm really excited to be able to travel to Japan with it again. Hopefully after this trip, I'll have like a much more detailed review of this bag because I really want to show you guys like kind of how this bag is just so incredible for traveling. Um, but that concludes about today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm excited to show you guys the travel video that I make in Japan while I'm there. It's probably gonna be like another two to three minute travel video like 
like I have made in the past. I'm really excited to make that. Hopefully you guys have some questions as well regarding gear. If you do, write them down in the comments and we'll get back to you. Thank you so much for watching again and we'll see you in the next one.